After the sensory overload of Cairo and the grandeur of ancient Luxor, we found ourselves further south, in Aswan, specifically Elephantine Island, home of the Nubian people. The island is a boat ride away from the center of Aswan, and it's quiet here, serene, a world away from the chaos of Egyptian cities, and a much needed escape for us. It's Aswan Museum area, oh. but I show you all the best from the Nile side because yeah. from up you can't see anything. The highlight of our trip was sailing the Nile, partially because of our amazing guide. This is Mustafa, Elephantine Island resident and our captain for the day. He showed us all the sights and sounds and made for very pleasant company in general. Mustafa was kind enough to get us some Egyptian breakfast. So the typical breakfast fare here uh, is a falafel sandwich. I'll deconstruct it so you can take a closer look. So you can see smashed falafel, what looks like tahini, cucumber, tomato, and this one looks like it has some french fries in it actually. Cheers. Really good. Aswan is one of the heartlands of ancient Egypt. While sailing the Nile, you pass by temple ruins, hieroglyphics carved into stone, and other signs of ancient civilization. Nice day, lovely day, oh, wow. nice people. When we visited, Nile levels were low. As you can see, the water levels get significantly higher at different times of the year. If you take a look at those carvings over there, that is an ancient way of measuring water levels of the Nile. So this is thousands and thousands of years old. This Nile meter consists of a stairway leading down to the Nile with death markings carved into the walls. You can see these are carved into the stone and even though they're thousands of years old, they're still incredibly well preserved going back to the boat trying not to slip and fall and after the hustle and bustle of cairo it really does feel so peaceful here you can really unwind the weather is warm you don't hear constant honking it's lovely Woo, we are on a boat <laughs> on the rooftop of a boat it's really, really nice, so peaceful. There's no one else here but us and birds. It is amazing. Birds feature really prominently in ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics and I'm really starting to see why. And I'm starting to see some familiar looking species out here. Like you could be a hieroglyphic bird. An afternoon on the Nile is the perfect opportunity to birdwatch. Thousands of species flock here in the winter, and Lenza made sure to capture them all. We have arrived at Potwag Beach, a very relaxed sand beach here on the banks of the Nile. <laughs> We're gonna stay here and relax a little bit, hang out. It's a good day. There's camels. We're gonna go check them out. Careful, there's poop everywhere. <laughs> it doesn't stink though. It doesn't stink though. Hello, camel. La 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 
la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la la Oh, honey. What do you think? That was cool. How beautiful is this island? We got some little trinkets here. This one is the jackal, the god of mummification. And we got a few more things, a few little scarabs. So overall, a very fruitful stop on our boat ride. Thank you very much. It's time for me to try the water. Ooh. Lenza going for a swim in very the Nile. Very cold, my friend. Very cold. <laughs> How does it feel? Woo! It's beautiful. <laughs> I love this. Pulling into a beautiful, colorful Nubian village. Let's go explore. It's very colorful, lots of pretty art everywhere, and in front of us, lots of crafts. So the Nubian people are an ethno-linguistic group. They're native to South Sudan and Southern Egypt, and our guide Mustafa is Nubian. And here are more camels. I love how they decorate the camels, how they dress. This Nubian village is built for visitors. You'll find crafts, clothes, trinkets. Vendors try to overcharge you. You know, standard tourist trap stuff. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Hello, kitty kitty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, friendly little cat. Over here, just some casual crocodiles. Oh yeah, hello there. They've been very still the whole time, like you barely see any movement. And then there's a big old gal over here. These crocodiles were not treated well. They're kept in this cramped, hot space and poked and prodded by their owners to perform for tips. Sadly, you do come across situations like this when traveling sometimes. My boat driver, gonna start a new career out here. We're approaching the rock that is the namesake of Elephantine Island. So apparently if you look at it from the angle that we're heading towards, you can see an elephant. Is this where you live? That's my house, the white one. Oh, the white one right there. Yeah. We're going to yes. Mustafa's house for some tea. Good afternoon. Mustafa is one of those rare people that seems truly content with life. He is proud of his home and where he comes from. And he enjoys the simple things. She's really talking it. Yeah, you. This is King Jamaica Guest House. Look at this view. We had grand plans of visiting more of Egypt's ancient wonders during our time in Aswan, but we ended up spending most of our time here. After a long day, we have worked up a huge appetite. The food is really good here. You definitely want to stick around and see it. But also, look at this view around me. It's so beautiful. You can see the Nile as well as Aswan City right across the way. This restaurant is brand new. I didn't realize quite how brand new. This is the 15th day that King of Jamaica has been open. 
And the owner is a guy named Jamaica, and he lived in Australia for 22 years, and he came back recently and opened up this restaurant with his mom, aunts, cousins. It's a complete family affair. There's also a guest house right nearby that we're staying in that's run by his cousin. Yeah, it's not long ago. Yeah, it's really, yeah. It's, you're doing well. There's a lot of people here. Yeah, it's not, yeah, you see? It's really nice. Congratulations. Yeah, it's, it's, what do you need is to show people you're kind, to show people your uh, respect, to show people your, your hospitality, so. That's what, nothing. Yeah, that's cool. So yeah. it's a family so we're, affair. We're, it's a family business and we are all sharing. That's awesome. And the guest house is the family too. Yeah, exactly. The that's guest really house nice. is the family too. So all the dishes here, every single order is cooked from scratch and you can see them doing it right here. The kitchen is right outside. We've ordered some exciting meats, which we'll reveal later. The food has arrived and it is a feast. There is a lot of really good stuff here. We've gotten two proteins, camel meat, which I'm a little sad about, but it's very normal here. A lot of restaurants serve it, so we thought we had to try it. And we've also gotten a really nice roasted chicken here. It's looking incredible. Uh, and everything here is served as a set meal, so you can see they've given us traditional Egyptian salads with tomato and cucumber and some herbs. And with every meal, we also get two vegetable tagines. So today they have zucchini, as well as what looks like green beans and carrots. So tagine, this is Nubian tagine. And how they make it, they take the protein and the vegetables, they put it in this clay pot here. First they cook it over the stove and then they put it in the tagine oven. And then when it comes out, it's like sizzling and delicious. Uh, I'm going to start with the main attraction, camel meat. I've never tried this before. This one specifically is cooked in a tomato, pepper, and onion sauce. So you can see big chunks of meat here, and it's just surrounded by delicious vegetables. Mm. It's delicious. It doesn't taste too far from like a really tender beef. There's no gaminess at all, which I'm surprised about. It's very PG overall. Don't be afraid to try it is what I'm trying to say. Okay, next up, I'm gonna try this amazing looking chicken. You can see it's like perfectly brown on the outside and they've served it with some caramelized onion and bell pepper as well. Like, look at that crisp. Let's debone that. I'm just gonna go for this with my hands. Hey, there's a cat right next to you. Look at to your left. <laughs> look, look at the little opportunist that's decided to join us. She won't let me pet her normally, but when the food show up, so does she magically. Hello, honey. Mmm, this is really good. It tastes like a nice, crispy roast chicken. It's really comforting, really familiar. Um, I love it, it's, it's really good. It's just like a simple thing, super well done. I bet the cat will think so too. This is zucchini with some tomato sauce and onion and pepper. Mm. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Dots on a Map. We hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the subscribe button below and we'll see you next time.